What is going on, Eye Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about a new study that shows that intermittent fasting might actually be more beneficial for endurance training than normal eating and normal dieting. And this, of course, is contrary to popular belief, where they believe that you have to eat something so that you can work out at your best possible potential. And I'm going to break that study down in this video. Stay tuned. Okay, and before I start, I did a soft launch on my new shirts, the IF Warrior shirts with the Warrior face and, and, and the helmet on there. You can cop your IF Warrior shirt. Like I stated, this is in conjunction with YouTube and Teespring. So I do have a store shelf right below every single video. And if you don't see the store shelf pop up, because that happens sometimes, the link will be in the description down below. And you can get your IF Warrior t-shirt for men, women. You can get IF Warrior mugs. And you can put the pride of intermittent fasting right on your chest. And of course, thank you to everyone who purchases it as you support me and this channel so that I can keep on pumping out content and so that I can get closer and closer to doing this for you guys full time. Now let's tackle the study. And so before I start, I do want to mention that the study uh, used mice. I don't want to mislead anyone to believe that this was done with humans. However, there hasn't been a study of this nature done with humans. Um, and usually that's the case. If it hasn't been done with humans, they'll do it with, uh, with mice and they'll see what happens. And then if it gives them an indication one way or the other, then they might begin the process to start moving this type of study towards human subjects. And I think that's really important to state what subjects are being uh, used for a study when you are presenting a study to an audience. Because a lot of doctors and a lot of uh, medical researchers, even here on YouTube, uh, don't do that. And it can be a little misleading. So the study had different groups of mice. So all, all the groups of mice were training. Uh, what they used was an alternate day fasting method, but they also made sure that the mice trained uh, when they were fasted for that particular group. And what they noticed was that the body was actually switching in real time, in real time was switching from using carbohydrates to fatty acids. That was not seen in the group that normally ate uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That was only seen in the fasting group. So the results are expressing a metabolic flexibility in the fasting group over the normal controlled eating group. And they, it was high endurance for these mice. They were running at high levels for 45 minutes. You were able to see the drop in uh, blood glucose that allowed for the switching of into ketones and fatty acids as opposed to using the carbohydrate. One other amazing factor that they found in this is that the branch chain amino acids, the natural branch chain amino acids from the body, from the plasma, actually increased significantly in the fasting group. So it basically created its own BCAAs without having to consume BCAAs to build muscle or protect muscle when going into a high endurance training. The body actually just automatically increased the BCAAs organically simply because they were doing an endurance training which to me shows the hyper intelligence of intermittent fasting with all the different scenarios that can happen when you're doing intermittent fasting it accounts for endurance training it accounts for uh power lifting it accounts for exercising it accounts for when you're not exercising it accounts for so many different things it starts doing counter actions biologically in your body that helps you actually protect yourself from anything that could happen in almost every possible scenario which i find to be extremely fascinating when it comes to intermittent fasting and why i found this study to be extra interesting considering those plasma factors were subject to the fact that they were fasting and doing endurance training fascinating stuff it also showed that the fasting group versus the normal control group upregulated fatty acid metabolism upregulated mitochondrial biogenesis and upregulated cellular stress resistance all of which are known to be crucial and critical to endurance training. So not only is it protecting your muscles, it's elevating certain things that help you be exceptional in the endurance training method, which is why they were seeing a 
higher performance output from those who were fasting than those who were eating normally. Another thing that they saw, unlike the studies that we've spoken about before, where it was just overnight fasting, this is a longer period of fasting where one can fully engage that post absorptive range and then utilize that to their benefit. They actually saw the respiratory exchange ratio decrease for those who were fasting versus those who were uh, eating normally. The VO2 max was also increased for the fasting group. So basically almost all points that you would need for this endurance training to be as optimal as possible was in favor of the fasting group over the controlled eating group. And they were hyper testing everything. By that I mean they had the uh, the mice in a chamber. So the chamber was able to uh, record the RER, the respiratory exchange ratio and determined that they had a decreased RER versus the uh, the controlled group. And they also saw when they decreased the respiratory exchange ratio, the mice then activated ketogenesis, which helped to oxidate and burn more fat during their endurance training. I'm definitely going to link the study below for you to read. I just keep in mind though, this study is pay to view. Um, it's about $35 if you want to dive deeper into the study to look at all the different points. But I just want to break down the different aspects of uh, what people thought would happen if you fast versus what is actually happening if you fast based on this study. Granted, understand that there is a limitation and that big limitation is that this has only been done in mice. We need to see a study like this in humans. But the good thing is that because this study produced the uh, results that it did, this can now trigger a, a, a movement to do a research in humans. So the best people to select is actually high endurance athletes and testing their uh, VO2 max, uh, testing their RER, testing if they're burning carbohydrates versus if they're burning fat for energy. Yes, they have done studies of normal high intensity interval training with simply overnight fasting and then they've also done it with a uh, full blown fasting and we've seen the benefits there uh, but endurance training if you took it to the top degree in terms of energy expenditure in terms of exhaustion in terms of uh, utilizing your vo2 max as much as possible we took it all the way up there how beneficial would intermittent fasting be this is a peek through the window of how effective and how intelligent uh your body is when intermittent fasting and what it does specifically when you're doing uh, high intensity high endurance uh top athlete level kind of stuff so hopefully they move this study onto humans so we can see the benefits of that i do wish that they can go full-blown fasting to see what happens uh like when they test people uh th that do the the ramadan they go full-blown uh, fasting uh without eating until they have to eat until they break their fast so that allows us to see what's actually happening when you have no food at all so i hope if they do this study with humans that they go the route of fully fasting and not the route of just uh reducing your calorie intake uh on certain days and increasing them on other days i want to see what happens when you fully fully fast so this to me is a better study than the studies that have come out about just normal high intensity interval training and overnight fasting the only thing that that study has over this study is of course it uses humans but it's not telling you anything really about intermittent fasting it's only telling you about what happens if you go to sleep wake up and train and then eat immediately after you train as opposed to not doing that and just eating in the morning when you wake up and then training and then not eating after that so i'm curious to see where they go after this new study showed the results that it did and of course i want to thank my patrons from my patreon and i'm going to put their names right up here